Hey everybody, let's watch this video real quick before we get started. You may have seen from when I did my sledgehammer special, I tell a story about a famous neighbor. They finally got to question him. There's oh, a comedian great. named Tom Segura who does a stand-up special. I don't know if you know this. And he tells a story yeah. that's allegedly about you. Yeah, it's complete fiction. It's okay. utterly made up. I've never met the guy. I've, <laughs> I've sadly watched it on Twitter. Sadly. It is twisted and deranged and it's complete fiction, which of course means every lefty believes it's true because it's horrible about me. And he just made it up and got some laughs from lefties who hate me. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, I toured the world and everybody hates you. Like it wasn't <laughs> just, just the liberals. lefties. Like yeah. people in every market all hated you yeah. equally. But that's why he was just such a good choice for the story. And so no more need to be said. Let's talk about Ted Cruz, shall we? Theodore uh Raul Theodore Cruz. Um, one of the most hated men in Congress, to quote a comment that was put here by Al Franken back when he was in power, I like Ted Cruz more than most of my other colleagues, and I hate Ted Cruz. Al Franken was a Democrat, by the way. Here's the thing. Ted Cruz has a reputation for being one of the most hated people in Congress and, and, and like the most, one of the most hated people in politics. Not because of ideological reasons, but because he's an insufferable prick and people just genuinely don't like working with him. People genuinely don't like listening to him. He's a strong dickhead. We all know this. Nobody likes Ted Cruz except some couple of weirdos. Okay. Now, the, the reason why uh, Ted Cruz is still in power is for three reasons, and I'll be happy to explain here. Um, what happened? Ted Cruz is... Despite being a schmarmy dickhead and, 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 and loathed by people in his own party, he is ideologically in, in lockstep with the priorities of the National Party. So people like Mitch McConnell are absolutely, even if they hate this man, perfectly fine with keeping him in power because uh, Ted Cruz is a... a pretty big earner in terms of like fundraising and b ted uh ted cruz uh is a safe seat he is uh he is a generally an ideologically consistent person that you can rely on to vote the way you need to when you're trying to get national uh party unity going in a certain direction so what happens here right uh what happens is is, is that the national party will support him no matter what because he has proven that he is able to win over democrats like bradley upper cross the third i'm sorry i mean red o'rourke and other challengers to his seat on the democratic side so then you might be wondering hey evan why doesn't somebody primary him well that's the thing similar to how the democratic party generally hates um outsiders take a look at you know Nina Turner's campaign in Cleveland and, and, and how and how full force everybody, including the entirety of including Republican money, came to stop her from getting into Congress. People, the establishment genuine generally hates upstarts. They like keeping the establishment candidates. They like working with the people who they've worked with for years. They don't want to, they, they don't want the person, they want Ted Cruz, even if they hate him, because they at least know him. They don't want some unknown. And then if, if, if the party supports an unknown, What's to stop them, like the other institutional players, from losing their seats? It's, it's food for thought. So what happens is, is that if, if Ted Cruz does get primary, he that that primary opponent doesn't get the resources from the Republican Party and and traditional party backers. So he might get some support from Democratic uh, support, but backers which or 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 not or anti-republican backers um which will allow someone like ted cruz to paint that opponent as not genuine not like as, as an outsider as a as a thing and while everybody may say yeah ted cruz sucks but at least he's on our side okay most of the time which is a, which is good enough to win an election when you have the level of name recognition ted cruz has so, but you might say, Evan, that primary opponent can still 
do what like do what Ted Cruz does and like go to all the little towns and like campaign and all that stuff. Well, I want to uh, show you Union President Sean Fay. Why are we talking about the UAW uh, president? Well, the way the way he won his seat was by cola was by basically doing what the opponent would have to do. He had to go all over the country on his own dime and take his own work hours and take his own personal and vacation days to be able to go campaign and talk to other union members and stuff like that. Meanwhile, the president at the time could go to any plant he wanted on union business and campaign on the union's dime. Technically not legal, but like, how are you going to prove that? So he had to do that uphill battle. Because he had limited resources, limited time, and limited availability of manpower and funds to be able to effectively campaign and for it to be able to physically be everywhere in the state. Ted Cruz has enough money that he can have a fucking tour bus and go all across uh, the state of Texas in this bus and talk to small town voters all over all over the country. This is how you, you know, talking to the voters is how you coalesce a, a, a victory in local politics. So you might be asking, why why uh, would this be difficult for a opponent? Well, when you don't have the funds, you have to self-fund like and, and, and do it like Sean Fain did, the president of UAW. And while, you know, Sean Fain had to go all across the country... This person still has to go all across Texas. And Texas, by the way, is fucking gargantuan for those who like need a size comparison and aren't already aware. And as a and as a reference point, I in a cultural exchange with my local choir to a, our sister city, did a cultural a cultural exchange across Eastern Europe. We flew in to we we flew we, we we went from Frankfurt to um Prague and the distance from Frankfurt to Prague as can be seen here with this here is a solid eight to nine hour drive eight to nine hour drive between this Prague this is Middle Texas, and now you're in East Texas. Hold on, pause for the video real quick. We are in the middle of recording. We are in the middle of recording. The trash fell down. Why did the trash fall down? Well, it's because Dickhead McGee over here, my gremlin of a son with four legs, decided, hey, I want up on the box. No, don't, no, don't reach... There's no hope for you here. You're going to dance for people's entertainment. Blah, 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 blah. Don't you mute for help. You are a little criminal. You are a criminal. And I'm going to eat your belly. All right. Go do something else. Okay, back to the politics. As I was saying, long ass drive, seven to eight hours. Here's the thing, that street, maybe one stop to piss, and that's about it. The thing is, is that you're going to have to hit tons of dinky little towns all over this country. All over Texas, you're going to have to go every single little, like, tons of little border towns, especially border towns, because, you know, the, the white racists there fucking love your ass. You're going to have to hit North Texas because this is where all of the weirdos live. Like, he's, you're going to have to go all over this, this state, which, by the way, I, living in, in, in Delaware, you know, PA, Delaware, and Maryland fit in here with room to spare. You know, so the amount of travel you're going to have to do in Texas is insane. And this is, by the way, on your own money and budget. You're going to have to pay for all of the the staff that's going to come with you. You're going to have to pay. Make sure you're going to have to make sure that you you are your own. You you have the funds to pay all for all their stuff. 
and the time to go and do this. So unless you have you are rich yourself or have some other type of backing, this is a difficult prospect to really just honestly consider. And and that ultimately is what why um Ted Cruz is 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 is, is still in power. Like this is honestly the reason why Ted Cruz still kicks around even though he is hated. He has he has name recognition. He has he is considered good enough by the Republican leadership for, in regards to his, you know, he, he he doesn't go against the party grade like ever. And like like he goes he does so much to not go against the party grain. He he fucking slobbered Trump's knob after he called after Trump called uh his wife a bunch of upset like fat and a bunch of other upset. This guy will swallow all of his pride and ego to stay in the good graces of the party because that's what makes him valuable. And that and and people would rather have a dickhead that they know they can rely on than a than a political unknown that they might like better. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so very much for watching. This has been, you know, just my brief explanation as to why Ted Cruz is still, unfortunately, a senator and still around, kicking around, despite everything we wish to be the contrary. I appreciate you, your time, and your viewership. If you want to support me and the videos and stuff that I make, uh, you can do so at himedia.gg slash tip. A dollar a month is a boon to my mental health and gets you exclusive videos, early access videos, and other content, all serviced through our Discord at himedia.gg slash Discord. Please join the community, and please give me your money. I am very poor. Thank you so very much for watching. I appreciate you, your time, and your viewership, and I will see you guys next time.